Hey guys, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to set up a dynamic form that will be able to display multiple categories on a single page. So let me jump right into it and show you an example and how I went ahead and set this up. So in this form, the user can select multiple answers and then I want to be able to display on the next page these categories that are tied to these answers. So when I click the send button, I have it redirected to a new page that will only display the categories that the user selected from the form. So the very first thing you need to realize is this is where all the magic is happening right here. When you submit the form, I'm having it redirect to the default um, URL to be able to display multiple categories on a page. This is all built into WordPress. So if you're not familiar, you're actually able to do this just using this code right here. So if you're not familiar with what these numbers are, these are the category ID numbers tied to each of the categories. So for example, after the user clicked submit, it dynamically was able to pull the IDs for each category that they selected and have it displayed in the URL. So in this example, I'll change that 18 to a 19. And you'll see right here, one of the results went away. That's because I'm now displaying categories 19, 23, and 27. So in the next part of the video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the form and how you get your category IDs. Okay, and the first step you need to do is create all of your different categories grab the IDs, and then you'll be able to start developing your form. So, like I said, create all of your categories first, and you need to grab the ID. So if you're not familiar with how to grab the ID number from each category, after you select your category, you're gonna see right here in the URL, the URL is gonna say ID equals whatever number. So what you need to do is grab the ID from all the different categories that you need tied to your form. Put them in a spreadsheet because we're going to need those when we develop the form. So once you do that, you need to make sure that all of your posts that you want tied to the form have those categories assigned to them. So in this example, I have seven different posts and you can see all the different categories that I've already pre-selected. Okay, so now that you have your categories created and you have your IDs, the next step is you need to actually start to create the form. So the first step is you're going to need Elementor Pro to be able to pull this off because Elementor Pro recently released a new feature called Dynamic Request Parameter. Um, fancy words for basically saying you can pass variables on through a form now in Elementor. You couldn't do that without doing a lot of extra custom code. So now you can dynamically pass uh, variables through forms. So let me show you how I set it up. So the first step is, you can see right here, after you, you select your type and you add your label, under this example, I have male pipe 19, female pipe 18. So the user will be able to select one of these radio buttons and these 19 and 18 variables, those are your category ID numbers. So that's why I said you're gonna to have to make sure you have those saved. So you wanna just match up your ID numbers to the category name that you have. So do as many as you need right here. And the next part of each section you need, you're gonna to need to do is under default value, this is where that new feature comes into play. You're gonna click on dynamic and under site, you're gonna click this button right here, request parameter. So this is gonna allow you to pass this variable right here, 19, because that's what you need. You don't care that the user selected the word mail. What matters is the IDs. So that's why you need to put them in right here. So when I go back here, and in order for this to work, you have to make sure you select post. So what that means is once the user clicks that big send button, it's going to post that variable into the URL. So once you click post, uh, you can add your parameter name here if you need to. And 
the next step is make sure you have your custom ID here. This is going to be your short code. So in this example, I just put the word sex because they select between male and female. And what I would recommend is copy the short code into another spreadsheet because you're going to need that for the redirect. So you go ahead and you just do that for all of the different questions you need. So in this example, I have instead of the two, now I have three. I have slow 23, medium 24, fast 25. So category 23, 24, 25, everything is set up the same way. I just, you want to make sure your custom IDs are different because this is what you're going to use for the redirect. So I'll just show you, I have the same exact thing set up on all three questions. Okay, so that's the first part. The next part is the redirect. So what I would recommend is after you click, after the user clicks on send, you need to have them redirect to that URL I showed you in the beginning where it was category equals uh, you know, 23, comma, whatever it may be. So add redirect into here. And this right here, I will paste this up here so you can visually see it. So after you create each one of your forms and you grab your short codes, you then need to be able to actually display it with commas. So in this first example, you could see where I have field ID equals sex. So that is, if I go back here and under advanced, you just grab each one of these short codes and you need to make sure that it's question cat equals short code, comma, short code, comma, short code. You can go on as long as you need. So you need to put that in here and that's really about it. Once the user then clicks on that send button, it will be redirected into here and these short codes won't display short codes in the URL. They'll pull the value that you added here, 19, 19, 24, whatever it may be. So let's walk it, let's walk through this again and you can see how the results came out. Okay, so here's the form again. So now that you have a better understanding of the back end, uh, it might make a lot more sense now uh, once we go through this again. So you select the options, of course, and you hit send. And then, like I said, the magic in this whole video is right up here. The category names are displayed right here, 18, 24, 27. So what I'll do is I'll leave the URL that you're going to need for the redirect in the description below. I'll also leave a link to more information about uh, Elementor's dynamic request parameter feature, just so you can see what other functionality you can do with the tool. And that's it for this video. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel for more future tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design. Thanks.